to my left we have the Shoei NXR, to my right we have the Shoei NXR2. This obviously an improvement on the outgoing version. The improvements, in case you're wondering, are to do with the visor, which is now better, the vents, which are now better, and the safety, which is also now better. This meets ECE 2206, which is the new regulation for safety coming in in 2024. Because of that, it is also ever so slightly heavier and ever so slightly bigger, as you probably would expect. It's about 100 grams heavier in the medium that we have here. From the people in the office that have this, and a lot of people in the office have this, I should point this way for the NXR, it's really popular amongst our team. They have told me that you can tell a difference between the two, but just picking it up, I can tell you it's still a really light helmet, definitely light compared to a lot of its competitors, and obviously still very comfortable. While I mentioned competitors, the most obvious I would say is probably Arai, as they have recently brought out the Quantic, which fulfills a lot of the same spec, a lot of the same market as the Shoei Will. That also meets this ECE 2206 safety standard, also from Japan, and they also have a fantastic reputation in the industry. You will see a lot of their helmets, Shoei and Arai, used in the likes of MotoGP or British Superbike, and obviously a significant amount of the technology used there does filter amongst their road helmets as well. Picking and choosing obviously what's most relevant for their road use. And they have been quite good to compare in the past as well. If you take the likes of the Arai Rapide and the Shoei Glamster, which came out around the same time as well, they fulfilled a very similar category and again are quite comparable. The quick takeaway as far as their differences with this, if you are looking at those two helmets in particular, is that the Shoei feels slightly lighter and it's a different fit. So it depends on your head shape. For me personally, Shoei is always the brand that fits me slightly better than more of an intermediate oval shape or fit and in case you're wondering that means you have a slightly longer head if I turn my head this way you might be able to pick it up but basically when I try on helmets I haven't got as much of a round fit so I tend to have gaps around the side of my head if I get a round fit when I go for the intermediate oval oh my god it fits like a glove and showy above all other brands actually is probably the one that is instantly the most comfortable on me. You can improve that slightly for yourself because of course they offer cheek replacements if you need to get bigger or smaller cheek pieces both those helmets have them. In case you are wondering, I should probably explain a little bit about what the ECE 2206 safety standard has changed. It basically tests more speeds, more impact areas, and they've included an oblique angle as well in that testing. So instead of it hitting a flat surface, which it still does, they now also hit an angled surface so that it bounces off and they can measure rotational forces going through the helmet. Basically to you and me, that means that it more accurately represents a real world crash so the helmets are obviously going to be getting safer from now on. It won't just be these two bands doing it, everyone's going to have to meet it, it's just that these are the two first that we have at Urban Rider. But before I get too off topic, and since I have it here, let me compare the NXR to the NXR2 and just show you some of the differences more visually. So as I mentioned, we have different vents on this one. The same amount of vents, they've just changed the opening and closure systems on those, and to me they feel a little bit more robust actually. So on the new Shoei NXR2, you have this central vent, as you'll find on there, but it is opened like this instead of this slide switch on the original. You've also got these eyebrow vents, or the two to your side there as well, which you can open and close. If it's a slightly colder ride, you might want to close the central one, which gives you the most airflow, and just open these two side vents. They will also exit over the top of your head, out the back there, through this exhaust vent. Another big difference on this one is that the exhaust vent is always open, you can't actually close that. But, as long as the front vents are closed, obviously it's not gonna allow airflow through, so it's just redundant. It doesn't need to be closed or opened, it will just sit there dormant. On the old NXR, you can open and close it, but you don't really need to, as I say, your venting is handled at the front of the helmet, so why would you necessarily need to open and close that? And it's not really that obvious whether it is open or closed, and you often forget while you're on the bike, so it just makes it simpler not to have that there in the first place. You've also got this vent on your chin bar, which will allow airflow through to the helmet and demist the visor if you need it to. That is pretty much the same between the two of these, it's just designed slightly differently on this one. The differences with the visor start with the fact that it's now centrally opened or closed. You have a little switch down there, which again is really easy to use through gloves. You just push it in and lift up the visor. And you have different stops on there if you need to angle it in certain positions. The visor itself is the CWR-F2 visor, 
which comes with a pin lock insert. Now, this helmet actually does come with a few different accessories. You have an optional chin guard if you want to put that on there to block out the airflow and make it a bit quieter. You've also got a breath guard, which will help stop the visor from fogging up, but predominantly, it's going to be the pin lock that helps you out there. And as I say, that is included in the box. Essentially, pin lock is the best when it comes to anti-fogging, and they have their highest grade of anti-fogging on this visor, as well as it being what they call max vision. Basically, it's a slightly wider pin lock, so it doesn't obscure your vision at all. The aperture is really wide, and you get a really clear view. The mounting bracket is slightly improved as well. It was good on the last one, but it's even better on this one. You can now angle the mounting bracket slightly, which you could do on the old one. The only difference was that you needed a tool or something just to get in there to open and close that or to change that. If I just spin this around to the side, you will see, hopefully, these two little switches on here, which you can now operate just with your finger really, really easily. It basically, and you probably won't be able to pick it up on the camera, I apologize for that, but angles it off or relaxes that angle slightly so that the seal is slightly relaxed as well between the visor and the helmet. You've also got what they call vortex generators on the side there. They look like teeth on the side of the visor. You don't really notice them too much, but up close you can see that they are slightly raised sections on the helmets, which as they have passed this helmet through a wind tunnel just to get the aerodynamics improved, and you can tell it's quite an aerodynamic helmet anyway. They've also obviously tested the visor, and these essentially just make it slightly quieter in what they do with the airflow around the helmet. It's really easy to change the visors as well. If you want a tinted visor, you might want that. It doesn't have a sun visor internally built in. Some helmets obviously do have that, but this one doesn't. Now, although it doesn't have that, you can get tinted visors, as I say. You can also get photochromatic visors. Thank you, Shelly, I'm very jealous of that. Which, if you've seen them on glasses as well, essentially react to the light and darken depending on the lighting conditions. They can be a little bit on the pricey side, if I'm being honest, but they are fantastically useful on the helmet. Now on to some of the safety. The helmet itself uses a mixed organic fiber and multi-composite shell construction, which they call AIM, or Advanced Integrated Matrix. It's what you'll find in the rest of their helmets as well, and it helps keep this lightweight, helps keep it thin, and obviously incredibly strong. On the inside, it has a nice, thick, multi-density EPS liner, again, for the safety and impact absorption. I should also say that you have these emergency tabs on the bottom here, so the liner itself obviously is removable. You can clean that or wash that as you need to. You can change the cheek pieces if you require, which will also help with the fit, but these little tabs here are for, in an emergency situation, people to get the liner off and the helmet off much quicker and more safely at the same time. Equally, with regards to fit and safety, this uses a double D closure system. Giggity. <laughs> Equally, with regards to fit and safety, it uses the double D closure system, which you'll probably already know is the safest closure you can get around your neck. It's also infinitely adjustable, so you can get a perfect fit each and every time you put on the helmet. That's why we like it. And as you know, as I've mentioned several times, it now meets this new safety standard, which is coming into effect in 2024, so a little ahead of time. We should be getting these towards the end of September, but imminently they will be with us so you can purchase. If you're wondering about the sizes of these, then from my own experience, I would say it is more of an intermediate oval fit, as I say. I think that's going to be the polarizing difference between Arai and Shoei in this case. Obviously, if you're looking at the Arai Quantic, for example, you'll know that that is a slightly rounder fit, so it will suit certain head shapes. If you are anything like me, then the Shoei is the one that I would go for, for a more comfortable fit. They have four shell sizes to match the different sizes that you can get this in as well. And of course, we have that size guide on the website if you are at all unsure. Now, if you're wondering about the price of these as well, it depends on the color that you go for. They're doing a variety of different colors. We will have the white, the basalt gray is what they actually call it. It's somewhat unique to Shoei. It's a really nice color, actually, even though it is called gray. And then we've got matte black and gloss black as well. If you go for the gloss colors, they're coming in at $429.99. If you go for the matte color or if you go for the metallic colors that they do, they're coming in at £449.99 instead. Keep an eye out for the links in the description to any of the helmets or things that I've mentioned in this review. Let us know in the comments what you think of the Shoei NXR2. Let us know if you are more of a Shoei person or an RI person, let us know how your day's going if you want to. And for more of the world's finest riding gear, stay tuned to Urban Rider. Thank you.